Hi, my name is Marsh. I'm the blonde from Coding Blonde, and I hope you guys are ready to be inspired because I am interviewing Ashley today, a fellow techie Instagrammer, an awesome woman, and also a full time software developer. A badass and Ashley is going to tell us about her journey and about all the experiences that made her her so let's jump straight into it hi Ashley how are you hi Masha I'm great thanks for having me thank you so much for giving me this interview and being on my channel I am very very excited for you to uh, share your story with my Yours. The first question is about your journey. How did you get where you are now? And was it a direct path, like a straight path? Or were there twists and turns? How was it for you? Um, so I guess I'll start with where I am now and then maybe go backwards. Um, so I'm a software developer at a fintech company um, in San Francisco. Um, I studied electrical engineering, electrical engineering and computer science at UC Berkeley. And I would say my journey was not super straightforward, but not like extremely complicated or twisted turvy. I actually always wanted to be a veterinarian or like a like an animal surgeon at like a zoo or something. I wanted to take care of exotic animals basically, or just be like a heart surgeon, something in like the medical field basically. Um, and then in high school, my junior year, I took AP Bio and. Um, I really didn't like it, and so I realized that the medical field wasn't for me. Um, and so at that point, I was already applying to colleges and I had no idea what I wanted to do. Um, so I actually ended up applying to different colleges um, under different majors. So like, I think at, to some I applied as like philosophy, um, like performing arts, like music, because I played violin, a bunch of random stuff. And I happened to apply to UC Berkeley as an they have an undeclared engineering major, so I happened to apply there with that major and I got accepted. And then at that point, friends and family kind of started like asking, oh, where'd you get in? What are you thinking? And they told me like, oh, UC Berkeley actually has a really good engineering department. So I was like, I'm going to go to UC Berkeley. <laughs> um, and so when I started, I initially was going to study mechanical engineering, but one of our required courses for undeclared engineering was, um, it was like a MATLAB course. And it ended up being really difficult for me. And like, I did not get a good grade in the class, but I really enjoyed learning the concepts. And it's like, it's like almost an intro to programming. Like it's, it's pretty similar. And so from there I was like, well, I like this stuff. Um, so then I started taking like the basic CS courses and I like that. So I just kind of kept going and going. Um, until it was too late to turn back. Um, so I declared electrical engineering and computer science at the end of my second year of college, my sophomore year. And then from there, I was pretty pretty set, I guess. I mean, it was definitely a struggle. Like, it wasn't, it wasn't easy for me at all, but um, from there I was pretty locked into CS. Uh, so I focused more on CS. It was like really difficult, <laughs> kind of over my head almost. Um, but yeah, so then I got an internship at London Club where I work now. Um, so I got an internship this summer, my junior year. Um, they asked me to come back full time. Um, and so now I'm on the DevOps slash infrastructure, um, infrastructure team at London Club. So yeah, it wasn't extremely windy or journey, but it took a little bit of time, I guess, to figure out what I really enjoyed and what I really loved. But it was definitely worth it because I feel like it pays off now because I like, I really have a job that I love and like, and I'm excited to go to every week. Um, it's not something I have to dread or anything like that. So I'm very lucky. <laughs> That's awesome. And yeah, it sounds like when you were choosing the university, that's when probably all the twists and turns were happening. Um, yeah. What was your decision making process behind choosing what felt right, what didn't feel quite right? Right. Um, so I visited as many of the colleges that I could just to get a feel um, for the campus, which is in like the area around it. So I feel like that's important too. Um, I kind of found out like I didn't really want to go to a small school. Um, I wanted somewhere big. I wanted somewhere far-ish away from home so that I could kind of be on my own. 
Um, and then, so Berkeley had a really nice campus. It's pretty big. Um, there's a lot of like nature things nearby. Um, SF is close by and then like Tahoe's nearby. And also Napa, country of course. <laughs> Um, so the location was good, the town was nice, and then yeah, it was just, I asked a lot of friends and family for their like recommendations and their opinions, and a lot of them were like, they said, like, do engineering, and it was really kind of like a blind leap almost, because I didn't have any experience with engineering or CS or anything like that, I was just like, I'm gonna go, and like, hopefully I like it, if not, I can switch my major, and like, we'll just kind of see what happens. <laughs> learning by doing and kind of I don't know just going into it and seeing where the flow takes you a lot of the times is the best thing to do right yeah. you you don't know what else is around that I guess twist or turn um, there's there's a song one of my favorite songs in Russia in Russia actually is about um, you know there's a new turn and you don't know what's behind it but the only way to find out is to take that turn. And that that song, I come back to that song every time I need to be, make a big decision or something like that. And it sounds like you did kind of this, you know, your, your thought process was similar. Just yeah. gotta take it and then see what happens. I'm like all about kind of going with the flow. I think a lot of times when you have your life or like some something in your mind just like very set and like all planned out, I feel like it kind of closes you off then to other opportunities that you otherwise would be more open-minded to. Um, I try to like, or I, I phrase it as like, oh, I try to stay open-minded, but in reality, it's just like, I have no idea what I'm doing most of the time. And I'm just like, oh, I hope it works out. And like, but I feel like it keeps me open-minded and like kind of open to new opportunities that I otherwise wouldn't even be looking for or open to. Um, and so I feel like through that though, I've kind of like found my way by trying different things. Like, oh, I do like this, don't really like this, I'm gonna keep doing this. Um, yeah, I feel like it's through that, just like kind of staying open-minded and like not having a set plan has kind of opened up doors for me that I otherwise probably wouldn't have gone through. And during that process, were there any times that were challenging and how did they make you stronger? Um, I feel like CS in general is very challenging. It was just so different from like anything I had ever studied and it was completely new. It really is like a completely different language. It's like a new way of thinking about things also. The major was just like really difficult. And then in classes you have like, you have those people who have been coding since they were like five years old, right? And so for me, like a big struggle was like oftentimes feeling I guess inferior or like feeling stupid. <laughs> like everyone seems to know what they're doing. Um, I don't know, they've been coding for a while or maybe they're just like smart or smarter than I am. So a lot of college I struggled with like just feeling really dumb. <laughs> like it's something I think I still struggle with um, now. Um, it's it, I mean, it falls into like that imposter syndrome category for I was sure. Gonna say, yeah. um, which I think is something a lot of people struggle with. And you just kind of have to keep telling yourself like, no, like just keep going, you're fine, um, you're good. Like, um, I had to tell myself that like many times in college, I was like, it's fine, like, just graduate. Like, C's get degrees. <laughs> yeah, that was, it was definitely a difficult, a difficult major. It was more manageable because I had good friends, like who like, we all helped each other and like, had a pretty good a pretty good I guess, support network. We'd like work on homework and projects together. We'd like do terrible exams together and <laughs> talk about how we were gonna fail and flunk out of college, which luckily didn't happen. But I think like no matter how discouraged you are, um, it's just it's like if you love it, if it's something you like and enjoy and like can see yourself doing long term, like as a full time job, then just like just keep doing it. Um, I feel like it's also nice. <laughs> in CS because you're, this is gonna sound bad, but like your grades don't matter as much um, for full-time jobs. Um, it's really like, in the interview they ask you like algorithms and like, I don't know, like they ask you to design um, and to code actually. So I feel like they're really looking at your skills like right then and there and not at your degree or like 
what grades you got in your courses like five years ago and stuff. Um, so that kind of also helped. I was like, I just need to graduate. <laughs> I mean, imposter syndrome is real. I just did a video about that. I published it yesterday. And like, in my opinion, and my, this is my theory that you should try to strive for that feeling for the imposter syndrome. But when you're younger and when you're at university, especially, it's so difficult sometimes. And it's great that you had that community that was helping you, well, motivating you and helping you go along. and. I completely agree like it's not about your your grades it's about what you know your experience and how you can present it at the end of the day i think it's important to remember that like for imposter syndrome going back to that um like everyone has their own unique experience and like only you can bring your experience and like your point of view so like no one else can bring that so i, I have to remind myself of that Absolutely, absolutely. You are unique, you are you. And that brings me to my next question, which is, <laughs> what is your superpower? Oh man, I say my superpower, F2. I can sleep anywhere, um, no matter like how loud it is or like what's going on around me. I can just kind of like curl up, like I put my head down like on my lap and I just, I can sleep. Um, okay. It's very useful, but also sometimes bad because sometimes I can't control my superpower and I fall asleep when I shouldn't, like in meetings. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely happened before. Actually, when I first started working, I like, or interning, I wasn't used to like that eight hour work day. Yeah. I was used to like an hour of class and a break, an hour of class and a break. And so, and I wasn't used to drinking coffee. I actually hated coffee um, back in the day. It sounds really weird saying that now, but I hated coffee. And so, <laughs> right, I recognize that cup. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was falling asleep like every day at work. It was so bad. I was like, I'm legit gonna get fired from my internship. Um, anyways, I have it more under control now. I hope no one from work watches this. Um, but yeah, it's more under control now. So sleeping is my superpower. And then slash, well, slash, I, I feel like I just need a lot of sleep as a human. I don't know why. Um, anyways, my second superpower is um, being able to eat a lot of sugar. Um, I eat a lot of candy and cotton candy and ice cream. And like everyone at work is like, thinks I'm gonna get diabetes. <laughs> um, but so my first theory is that my body needs a lot of sleep. My second theory is that my body needs a lot of sugar. So that's why I sleep so much, eat so much sugar. <laughs> you just need a lot of fuel. Yeah, exactly. My body is powered by sleep and sugar. Yeah, I mean, that, those are the two amazing things in life, you know? <laughs> yeah. I wish we could sleep more. It's it's awesome. It's yeah. awesome. Like a, a very, very useful superpower, especially on planes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I can sleep. I can also sleep for like a really long time if I need to. So like 13 hour flight, like I sleep, I wake up and like eat a little. And then I just like go back to sleep again. That's <laughs> and amazing. Then I wake up and I'm there, which I know is like not everyone's experience. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Transatlantic flights for me are not as smooth. <laughs> ah. <laughs> but um, that's awesome. And what is your next adventure? Do you have anything? Um. Well, so literally, like, I'm going to Alaska. Um. Like, literally, I guess that's an adventure. Um. In August, I'm doing like a cruise tour. Uh, which will be fun. We started in Alaska and we'll end up in um, Canada, in like Vancouver. So that's my, I guess, literal, literal adventure. Um, but other than that, um, I feel like I'm still like at my job, figuring out what I want to do, like what fields I want to kind of like really specialize in, or like what path to go down, like. Um, like if I want to keep doing software, like a bunch of people architect, like do I want to do more TPM, or like stuff like that. Um, it's like a constant journey. Um, I run like an Instagram account on the side just for fun, and like that is also <laughs> a journey. Um, figuring out, I guess, where I want to take that in the future. Um, so yeah, a few, few different things. I guess. That's life. <laughs> Exactly. That that's awesome. It's it's amazing when you have so many different 
things to look forward to and so many different things to kind of explore. And Alaska is awesome. I've been there a couple of years ago. It was so beautiful. Oh, okay. So the, yeah, I've heard it's really, really beautiful. It's awesome. Just make sure you're far away from grizzly bears because we had a very, Whoa. very risky experience. Oh, wow. They're, they're real. <laughs> they're real? <laughs> they exist? They exist. They're huge, right? They're huge. And yeah, we, we just had a very risky experience. I'm sure with a crew, but we kind of selected it ourself, uh, ourselves. So I'm sure with a cruise, you will be <laughs> completely safe. Like they won't take you to <laughs> places. Yeah. No bears on the cruise. Yeah. Apparently though, there's like one of the top 50 pizza places in the US, one of them is like in Alaska. Really? Yes, so I'm gonna go eat pizza in Alaska for sure. That's like the only thing that I must do. Like on my must do list in Alaska, I'm like, I have to go to this pizza place of like Moose's. Wow. Shout out to Moose's. <laughs> that's yeah, awesome. So, huh. I'm that's, doing that. That's, that's that random? That is very random. Yeah. That is ve that. very <laughs> random. But I am very excited to follow your journey on Instagram while you're in Alaska. Yeah. It's very, yeah. very exciting. Yep, yep. I tend to do like tropical vacations usually. I like beaches, sunny weather. Um, so this will be different, but I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, definitely. And it should be sunny, more or less. I hope so. I don't do well in cold. Yeah, it won't be cold. Not this time of the year. Yeah, for sure. it'll be good. Yeah. <laughs> So, and my final question for you is, what would you recommend for women who are trying to find their passion or build their path? Like, just anything that you could recommend for them to kind of take control of their lives. And Great. Um, I think just speaking from experience, like my own experience, um, I'd say to stay open-minded. I heard somewhere there's a piece of advice. Um, because one thing that I tend to do is doubt myself or I tell myself, oh, like, you shouldn't do x y or z like, you're not ready to do this you're not experienced enough you don't have you don't know enough about this topic to i don't know talk about it or present on it or whatever it is but i heard this piece of advice that was like if someone asks you to do something it means that they think you're qualified for it and so you should just do it like don't doubt yourself like just say yes i mean unless like logistically it doesn't work or it's something unreasonable like all that aside, like if it's if the thing that's holding you back is yourself and thinking I'm not qualified enough, I'm not knowledgeable enough, I don't have enough experience, whatever, just like don't listen to that. Just do it because if someone asks you to do this thing, that means they think you'll rock at it. So yeah, you should do it. So um, there's that. I say stay open-minded. Like it's good to have like a plan set, but I think sometimes opportunities present present themselves. And you might at first think like, there's no way, like that's so not me. Um, I've done that before, but then like, I kind of thought about it more. And then I was like, actually like, this could be cool. Um, it'll push me out of my comfort zone. I'll get more experience in this field. This is like public speaking, for example, I was asked to like speak at a, at a meetup and like, I hate public speaking. So I was like, no, definitely not happening. And then I was like, ah, oh, it might be cool. And I'll meet other people like in this community. It was for like a graph database. Um, and then it opened up like a whole nother door because from the meetup, I then spoke at like the Graph Database Conference. Um, a few weeks ago, I spoke at DockerCon. Um, I spoke at like a handful of conferences here and there, which is like, I never would have imagined that I would like ever be a public speaker because I hate it. And I mean, I just think I'm not good at it, but um, yeah, just staying open-minded and just trying it and seeing if you like it. Um, is important and then if you're passionate about something and you like it or love it just don't give up I guess it sounds super corny um, but um, I guess this is just going back to college there are like so many times when I just didn't know if I was gonna like make it I guess there was like I thought I was I was like I'm really not good at CS I'm really not good at coding like compared to everyone else in my class like I feel like I'm the worst. Like, and if there's so many other really like people who are really good at this, like, why would anyone ever want to hire me? Like, like, I don't know. That was kind of what I was thinking at the time, and um, that's a bad mentality. Don't do that. Um, um, CS and coding. It was something that I really enjoyed doing and learning about. Um, and so, really, like, just just stick with it. And it doesn't matter. 
what other people think or what they say um if they think this career path or whatever you're doing is like oh like that's interesting i don't picture you as i don't picture you as an engineer i don't picture you as doing this or that um still listen to them they don't know what they're talking about um you know yourself and what you love um so just do you that's awesome that's amazing advice thank you so so much this was yes thank you so much for having me thank you (laughs) Awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ashley. Your story is very inspiring and I'm super excited to share it with my viewers. I hope you guys are feeling just as inspired as I am right now. And if you want to follow Ashley on Instagram, make sure you do so by following her account, which is Ashley Chloe, or also there will be a link in the description. So you can just scroll down and click it and find Ashley. And yeah, let's all be be Instagram digital friends and you know Instagram friends become real friends I really hope Ashley you will come to Colorado sometime and we get to hang out nothing though anyways (laughs) please let me know what you thought about this video in the comments and also make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and find me on other social media for example Instagram Uh, my username is coding blonde have a wonderful time today you're currently experiencing Bye.